All right, so last time we were inside of ZBrush, and um, we we took some time and we started detailing out our uh, crate piece. And I just wanted to show you guys the progress, and the next step is for us to um, export that out from uh, ZBrush here. And as you can see, I, I uh, went ahead and I merged everything down. So now it's one piece and then I can just export that. And another thing I did was I went in and I got my clay build up. And what I did was I just started, you know, denting some of these edges up just to give it a little more character, a little more, a little more life uh, to, to the piece. So now we've got a piece that kind of looks like that. And it's got a little more of the ridges and a little more, it's a little more beat up, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of what I went and did kind of all around here and you guys can take some time and, and do the same uh, something something similar all right. so the next step is we're just going to export this whole piece and as you can see it's a pretty pretty large piece it's got at least uh, six million active points um, so uh, by the time we're done it's going to be a massive massive high poly so let's go ahead and export this out so I'm just going to export this wooden crate to um, my uh, my folder, and that's uh, let's see, let's find it's my drive, my desktop, and then the crate, and then I'm going to put it. This should be an export folder in the crate, or maybe it's on this desktop. Okay, it's on this desktop. All right, so here's my crate, and then here's my exports. And then I'm going to put ZBrush, just so I know. All right, so it's going to take a second to calculate and send all of that stuff through the exporter. And now uh, we will pick this right back up inside of 3ds Max. Okay, now we're back in 3ds Max just like magic all right so now I've got my uh, wooden crate exported ZBrush and let's bring that bad boy in and see what we got going on here all right so that's all the groups let's just import it it's fine I don't care about all that it's uh, quite a big piece of mesh and that is perfectly perfectly uh, fine Take a moment and we should be getting our highly dense mesh momentarily. All right, so here we go. So now we've got our model right back inside of a uh, of 3ds max and um, as you can see we've got these two over here and these are black because the they're just uh, the faces are flipped so uh, we're gonna have to go fix that but that's that's perfectly fine I kind of like what I'm seeing here so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete these guys because I have ones to replace them. And I'm actually going to uh, just detach these two and then flip them up. And then uh, we will complete this process. So right, I deleted those two and I'm just gonna select these guys. And I'm going to detach them. I'm going to go nails. Okay. All right. So it's going to take a second. My computer's chugging a little bit. Um, and uh, we can we can fix some of these performance issues if you're having trouble with your PC uh, doing any of these operations. You can um, reduce the the amount of. Uh, you can even let's go in here. I can right click here and then I can go to my object properties 
and I can just display this as a box. I'm just going to display this as a box right now so you guys will see your computer run a lot faster. You won't be able to see everything, but you'll you'll have an uh, an understanding of what's going on. So you can still select it. It's all still there. It's just displaying it as a box, which is not as intense on your uh, on your computer. So that's one of the ways where you guys can um you guys can kind of reduce that the 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 toll that this kind of work will take on your uh, on your PC. And you can see that these this is a really cool cool piece of wood we got we got going here. And we've got all our detail in here and man this is looking really nice and um if you guys have gotten here man you guys have uh done something uh to kind of get you guys started so let's uh i'm gonna mirror this all right all right i'm gonna mirror this guy on the uh z-axis and then I'm going to make sure that I have it as a copy all right and then I'm just gonna hit OK all right then I'm gonna do the same to this guy it's gonna mirror okay and instead of the z-axis again we're gonna do it on the X and it's really far away from our model so we'll need to pull this bad boy right back on it's about there and what's going on it's the pivot so far off so I'm just gonna go into my um, my hierarchy tab and I'm gonna affect the pivot and I'm gonna center it to the object and I'm just gonna use that my new centered pivots to move my new nails back in place all right so all our nails are back we're not missing anything if you had any flipped faces I mean you you, you know you're gonna want to go ahead and fix those so that you don't get any rendering or baking issues when we try to bake these bad boys uh, out all right so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go back in here and I'm gonna reattach my nails back to it just gonna reattach my nails because for the next operation that I'm going to do, I want to have everything together because we're going to essentially recreate the high poly that we uh, originally finished. So if you're following along with this part, um, this is uh, a step that, you know, for oh, this is for the guys who went ahead the extra step and took it into ZBrush to get to get themselves a nice, uh, a nicer kind of uh, high poly out of it. All right, so now I've attached everything and uh, we are good to go. Now let's just start now duplicating it. So I'm just going to select this guy. I'm going to affect the pivot. I'm going to center it to it. And uh, let's see. Let's do actually. Let's mirror this entire thing. Actually, let me. I'm going to hold this down. Hold down shift and right now it's not doing it's not snapping because I don't have my uh, angle snaps on so I just hit a on the keyboard and I can turn on my angle snap to make sure that I'm turning it an exact 90 degrees I'm gonna make that a, uh, a copy of it I'm just gonna pull this guy out right here and this guy here does not have this uh, middle post in the middle so we're just gonna delete that and this will save us you know some more geo so that's always nice Take a second, I just need you to delete. Let's 
taken like 10 seconds just to delete an object. That's crazy. Hopefully it doesn't crash on me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be careful here and uh, take my time. So now, now let's get rid of these extra nails that it created as well. Just delete. All right, so now we have deleted both and we should have something uh, workable now. this side and this side. So now we can just mirror this guy. All right, so my mirror, I'm gonna mirror it on the uh, X and Y axis like that. And um, I can just hit okay. All right, so now I can just uh, reposition this guy how I want it. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. So they kind of all fit like puzzle pieces, a very wooden puzzle piece. All right, so now we just need to make the bottom and the top. Right. And then we'll call this bad boy Finito. Let's call it our shift. I'm gonna rotate this bad boy. 90 degrees, get my 90 degrees, and then just make it a copy. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Let's pull this bad boy up into place. And then just like that. Take the red end.
I've got a little bit of gap right here, though. I'm just going to use the scale tool to nudge uh, this top piece a little bit over so it fits on this bad boy just a little more snugly so that we have a better looking lid. It's not going to take a lot for it, but it'll, it'll definitely help us make it a little more snug. Yep, just like that. Nothing more. Be a little less. Mm-hmm. Just, just pull this all the way in. Alright, look at that. Alright, and just like that, we have ourselves the lid. Now let's make this lid the bottom. So I'm going to mirror this guy. Alright, so instead of the same XY, I'm just going to do this guy on Z. Make it a copy. Hit OK. And then let's pull this guy by the Z axis. Let's pull this guy down. Alright, and just like that, we have knocked out our high poly mesh. Alright, so the next step would be for us to uh, to render this bad boy out so that we can see what our high poly is, and then after that we'll make the low poly and then texture. All right. All right. Thank you guys for watching. These are just some of the extra bits that you guys can do to take your model really to the next level, right? You can really start to, you know, really create some cool, interesting pieces. And, you know, the the only issue that I'm seeing right now is that I've get I've got this this uh pattern right here that's repeating, you know, and what I would do if I was, you know, uh going to kind of finish this piece out or like really really take it to that next level because wh what happens is like when you rotate it you can tell that it's on the same side so you can just select one of them right and then you can grab that piece and then rotate it right you can just rotate it around and then you'll get something different but other than that I mean I think the the piece was pretty much a success so we can just rotate it like 90 degrees control Z that because we don't have our angle snaps on and we want to snap it and uh, you would just say hey and then just, just rotate it and then place it back all right so that's one of the things that you guys can do to to really I mean take this piece and and run with it so uh, go ahead do that fix it up and uh, well I'll see you guys in the next uh, video all right.